Okay. The next is about the mulberry cultivation. Now we have seen what are the different varieties uh, of uh, uh, mulberry that are being cultivated by the various research centers. Now we next go to the mulberry cultivation. What are the various methods of mulberry cultivation? So now coming to the introduction. So you all know actually the mulberry cultivation, how it is being done. So already we have seen the various uh, varieties of the mulberry. Now coming to the mulberry plant. So actually mulberry plant is a hardy plant which is capable of thriving under a variety of agronomic conditions. At the same time, it is also very sensitive to optimum agricultural inputs. So this is evident because it requires the optimum rainfall, optimum temperature conditions. Unless until you give all these conditions, it is very difficult to grow the mulberry plant. So the poor rainfall conditions of 25 to 30 prevailing in South India, uh, India will not hold good. So it is better that the current leaf yield uh, is the order of only 3,000 to 3,005 kgs per hectare, whereas under assured irrigation and appropriate fertilizer application, it can be stepped up to 30,000 kg or so, or nearly 10 times. So mulberry under South Indian conditions, unlike in temperate regions like Japan, Korea, and USSR, uh, USR gives, uh, gives continuous growth almost throughout the year. Almost throughout the year because of optimum temperature conditions and good sunshine available. So it is these aspects that should be properly appreciated and accordingly every effort has to be made uh, to go for the uh, mulberry cultivation. So what are the basic conditions that are required? How the land should be? How the soil should be? What are the various climatic conditions? So these all matter a lot. Now coming to the soil and the climatic conditions. Now the mulberry can grow practically on any type of land except on very steep lands. Good growth however are obtained when it is raised on either flat land or on gently sloping or undulating lands undulating lands on more slopey or steep lands, necessary attention has to be made and conservation methods have to be taken care. So contour planning or even bench terracing should be given. So mulberry grows in a wide range of soils, but the best growth is obtained in loamy to clammy loam soils. The mulberry plant can tolerate slightly acidic conditions in the soil. In case of two acidic soils with low pH, that is a, a five, Necessary corrective measures have to be taken with the application of dolomite lime. In case of alkaline soils, in case in case of alkaline soils, application of gypsum should be restored for correction of the soil alkalinity. Since mulberry is a deep rooted plant, the soil should be sufficiently deep into about two feet in depth. In respect of elevation, mulberry thrives well up to four thousand feet above which the growth will be retarded because of the cooler temperature. So this, this is how the soil and the climatic conditions should be uh, taken care of. The next is establishment of the mulberry gardens, how it should be during the first year. Now mulberry falls under the category of perennial crops because they are all perennial crops, means they can be grown throughout the year. And once it is properly raised during the first year, it can come to full yielding capacity during the second year and, the, and can last for about 15 years in the field without any deterioration in the yield. So it is therefore very important that the initial planning and establishment of the crop should be carried out according to the scientific methods. So before going to that, how to prepare the land? The first is the land preparation. Now for the mulberry cultivation, the land should be prepared by deeply ploughing with heavy mold board plough up to a depth of 12 inches to 15 inches, that is 30 to 35 centimetre in order to loosen the soil before you plant the mulberry leaves, taking advantage of the pre-monsoon showers during April to May. So therefore, the land may be ploughed once or twice with a light plough or the country plough to bring the soil to a 
fine silk. Then afterwards, a basal dose of organic, a basal dose of organic manure, like compost or the cattle manure, should be applied at the rate of at least ten tons per hectare of for rain-fed mulberry and twenty tons per hectare for the irrigated mulberry. Then finally, the mulberry should be properly incorporated into the soil by ploughing, and the land should be levelled and made ready for planting during the monsoon rains. That is during June to July. So it also must be stressed here that application of the basal dose of organic manure like the uh, compost or the cattle manure is essential for the establishment of the plantation. So under very exceptional cases, where when they are not available, no altern an alternative may be resorted to be growing by nursery raised plants and transplanting them into the main field. So this is how you have to take care. So first is how to prepare the land. Then after preparing the land, then you have to apply the compost or the cattle manure. Now, generally, pit system of planning with wider spacing should be adopted for the rain-fed mulberry, while row system. So basically, they say for mulberry cultivation, there are two types of system, that is a pit system and the row system. So the pit system of planting actually is basically adopted for rain-fed mulberry, while row system with closer spacing can be adopted for irrigated mulberry. Therefore, for planting the mulberry under rain-fed conditions, the pit should be dug at a space of three feet into three feet, that is 0 0.9 meter into 0 0.9 meter. The pit should be made of the of this particular size, that is 35 centimeter into 35 centimeter and at least 35 centimeter deep. And these pits are filled up with soil, preferably mixed with some cattle manure. And in the pits, the cuttings or the rooted saplings have to be planted. Now, in the case of irrigated gardens, the prepared land is thrown into ridges and furrows by using a rich furrow or working with a manual labor as indicated in the diagram over here. Then the cuttings are then later planted along the edge on the ridges. So it also may be noted that here there is only one irrigation channel or for every root, two rows of mulberry plants. Then this will help in both saving or also uh, use of the irrigation water. So this is how you have to go about with the land preparation. After preparing the land, you have to check whether you have to go for the pit method or you have to go for the uh, row method. So based on the pit method or the row method, then you have to go for the rain fed or whether it is a rain fed mulberry or whether it is a irrigated mulberry. So that you have to take care of and then go according to these uh, uh, different types. And next is the planting material and the planting. So from where you should get this planting material and from where it is available. So in tropical conditions, especially in this, as in South India, mulberry cannot uh, can root easily. And therefore, it can be easily propagated through cuttings with minimum time and expenditure. So in South India, in almost in all the South Indian countries, uh, South Indian regions, the mulberry will root very, very easily. And therefore, it is available throughout the year and it can be propagated by simple cuttings with minimum time and expenditure. So these cuttings should be prepared from four to eight months old. Hardwood branches, which are brown in color and at least 10 to 12 mm in diameter. And these cuttings should be at least then 18 to 20 centimeter long with a minimum of three butts. So the ends of the cutting should be clean, cut with a sharp knife without the sp splits or bark peeling off. So this is how you have to say, see here, different types. So let's selection of the cuttings and their responses. So A stands for the short and thin cuttings. Uh, they are actually unsuitable for planting. The B is planting of unsuitable cuttings. This is not uh, um, required. Then you have right type of cutting is this one. And root formation and growth, vigorous, when right type of cutting is planted is this. So these are the things. So you have to take care. Then it is in the selection of the planting material that mistakes the often made which result in poor establishment of the plant. So you have to, when you are going for it, you have to select which type of cutting you have to take it. And then that will give you the better yield. So cuttings either thin in diameter or green in color should be avoided because there are chances of the success are very poor. So therefore, for successful rooting, the cuttings uh, of the cuttings, every care need to be taken. And these cuttings of the desired maturity, thickness, and the length alone, as indicated above, are selected for planting. Are selected for pla uh, planting. See here, this is how we have seen A, B, C, D. So which one you have to select, that you have to note it down. Then uh, next is, uh, because only such cuttings actually will provide necessary nutrients for the buds to sprout and grow 
uh, till such time that adequate root formation will take place. So this you need to take care. The next, it is also, you also should remember that the soil should be very fertile, containing adequate, adequate quantities of the organic matter. So it is therefore necessary that whenever the state planting of cuttings is resorted to, the soil should receive a basal dose of manure, the like compost or the organic manure uh, at the rate indicated. And the manure should be thoroughly mixed with the soil before you plant. Then at the time of planting, you should see that the cuttings are placed deep into the soil and the soil around also should be well compacted, leaving just one inch alone of the cutting exposed. This will ensure that the cuttings being planted sufficiently deep in the soil, resulting in the formation of roots below the ground level. Further, this will also prevent the cuttings from drying up. So therefore, while planting, the cutting should be planted either upright or with only a very slight tilt. Now, in the places where the compost or the cattle manure is not available, suppose, then what you need to do, it is highly risky. So to, to go for direct planting of the cutting. So under such conditions, you should raise the rooted plants in nurseries and transplant them, uh, transplant about three months old rooted plants with about uh, three inches growth and a stem thickness of about 10 mm in the main field. Then while transplanting nursery of raised plant, then it is also important to see that the original cutting from which the plants have been grown should also be buried deep in the soil, at least one to two inch below the ground level. And the soil also around it should be pressed hard in case of the planting cuttings. So this will ensure better anchoring or attachment of the plant. So in all these new cutting uh, plantings, with either cuttings or the nursery raised plants, it should be uh, time that there is at least one to months of rainfall following the plantation operation, particularly in case of rain and manpari. So these steps have to be taken care of. Okay. So when once this is all done, so first one is you have to select the land, then prepare the land, preparation of the land is necessary, then uh, mulberry uh, cuttings, whether you have to grow for, uh, take the mulberry cuttings or Directly, if you are not able, if you are, if, if you don't have the manure in the form of the uh, what do you say, the cow dung or the compost, then you have you can take the um, small roots and then you can grow them in the nurseries. After growing them in the nurseries and it has attained up to a certain size, you can take it from the nurseries and then directly plant it in the open field. So before all those things, the field should be uh, much. Uh, it should be plowed and it should be taken care of. The water. Uh, should be available and also the compost should be available. Then only you will get a good yield. The next is spacing of the mulberry. So when you are actually trying to plant the trees, how what is the distance that you need to maintain between one tree to the other? So that is what we call it as nothing but the spacing. Now in the case of rain-fed mulberry gardens, uh, gardens, you should see that you have to raise the mulberry plant with a stubbler frame so that it is able to withstand prevailing drought conditions. Therefore, the spacing should be at least 0.9 m into 0.9 meter. So the spacing between the two plants, that is, uh, should be between 0.9 meter into 0.9 meter as is being currently practiced. So when the cuttings are planted in the pits prepared for this purpose, they should be planted in trees or at a spacing of 15 centimeter from each other, forming an equatorial triangle. So when the nursery raised rooted plants are transplanted, they may be planted as single plants. So these things have to be taken care of. Then in the case of irrigated mulberry, the uh, advantage of uh, in raising mulberry for both qualitative and as well as quantitative harvest, it is in the favor of planting harbury with a spacing of about 0 0.6 meter between the rows and 23 to 25 centimeter within the row. So this, uh, this slightly wider spacing uh, it has wider spacing when compared to the existing polar system of row cultivation. So this will help you to produce better quality of leaves uh, uh, from the point of silkworm breeding. So in the case of irrigated gardens, again, where the practice of leaf picking instead of whole shoot harvest is followed, then it is necessary to adopt a wide spacing, okay, where you require about 0.6 meter into 0.6 meter, okay, is also practiced. So, but in this case, the plants tend to become almost small trees and they present problems of harvest. So the spacing is very, very essential in case of the rain-fed mulberry and is in case of the irrigated mulberry, how much of space you should, uh, I mean, keep between the mulberry plant that you have to take care. So this is called as spacing. Now next is variety of mulberry. So what type of mulberry uh, variety? Already we have seen the different uh, varieties of mulberry. So which variety actually is the best suitable 
and which variety you need to choose. So an improved selection uh, variety of uh, the mulberry, namely Canva 2, also called as M5, also called as M5, is a superior variety which is evolved by the institute, that is the Sericulture Institute, and, and which is a vigorous strain responding well to the manuring and is also capable of giving about 25% more leaf yield when compared to the other. So this variety actually thrives well both under dry as well as under uh, irrigated conditions. Quantitatively also, quality wise also, it is superior to the local variety of mulberry and therefore it should be used with great advantage. So just now we have seen the different varieties of mulberry. Among them they say that Canva 2 actually has been preferred, uh, referred to as the best variety. So if you have this variety, then we can go for this mulberry variety. The next is manure. So we all know actually for the cultivation of the plants, you need to uh, have the manure. So that manure may be in the form of the organic waste or it may be in the form of a cattle manure or the compost. So whichever is available, you need to uh, see. So this manure. Now, the manuring, you know, application of a basal dose of the organic manure, like compost or the co cattle manure, is very, very essential for the establishment of the mulberry garden. So, therefore, the young growing plants should be assisted to put fo uh, forth vigorous and maximum growth through periodical fertilizer. So, we need to actually give this manure in the form of fertilizer. So, fertilizer application is very, very essential. So, here again, they have said that in case of rain shed garden, which is planted in month of June to July, during the southwest monsoon period, the mulberry will receive sufficient rains from both the monsoons and therefore it should be taken full advantage to achieve maximum growth and build up a huge uh, plantation so that the plant may stand the following drought months from the January to April. So this is achieved by applying two doses of nitrogenous fertilizers such as ammonium sulfate or urea. So you can uh, uh, spray ammonium sulfate or the urea. The, uh, uh, urea, then this would also enable the plants to reach a growth of about 6 uh, uh, inches, that is about 2 meter in about 6 to 8 months. Whereas in case of irrigated mulberry, where the plant will grow vigorously due to assured irrigation, then the first dose of nitrogenous fertilizer should be given after 2.5 months of planting and the rate of about 40 kg. In the next 2 to 2.5 months, again the plants should be ready for the first harvest of the leaves. Therefore, the normal fertilizer application program should be resorted to and it should be taken care of. So how much amount of the manuring you need to actually give or how much amount of fertilizers in the form of ammonium sulfate and in the form of urea or in the form of compost has to be given also need to be taken care of. So this is called as the manuring. The next is weeding and intercultivation. Now what do you mean by weeding? Weeding, uh, weeding also should be kept to the minimum. So sometimes when you are going for the crop cultivation or mulberry cultivation, any type of cultivation if you grow, so their unwanted weeds also will grow. So that has to be weeded out. Means you have to remove these unwanted plants or unwanted roots that actually grow along with the crops. So weeding and the intercultivation also has to be taken care of. So what they say is during the initial stages of this plant establishment uh, in the field, weed growth should be kept to the minimum so that the growing young plants are not smoothed by the weeds. Weeds are nothing but unwanted plants. So they should not. So if the weeds grow along with these mulberry plants, what happens is then they will become an artifact. So they will actually, what they try to do is they will hinder the growth of the young mulberry plant. So in that case, you need to remove them. So at least two weedings should be carried out during the first six months after planting of cuttings. So once after two months of planting and again after an interval of two to three months. So this weeding operation, with roots to remove the uh, weeds uh, with the roots. So this deep digging is carried out at a part of weeding operation. And also it results in uh, necessary loosening of the soil and stimulation to the plants to grow vigorously. So thus special care should be taken to reduce the weed growth as much as possible in the first year of the planting itself. Therefore, the shade effect of the fully grown mulberry will tend to keep the weeds down. Now, similarly, periodical intercultivation also should be resorted to, particularly in case of dry mulberry gardens during the first year, so that soil loosening results in better aeration and stimulation of the plant growth. So this also helps in catching the rainwater and also its deep penetration. 
for better retention and the soil moisture. So both intercultivation, uh, intercultivation as well as the weeding has to be taken care of. Then the next is maintenance of the mulberry gardens after the initial establishment. So when once you uh, started your uh, mulberry cultivation and you are at the initial establishment, then how to maintain these mulberry gardens again is very, very important. Now coming to the maintenance. Now during the first year, okay, when you are growing the mulberry cultivation, during the first year, all attention has to be concentrated for on establishing of the mulberry. So one should not be in a haste to take early leaf harvest. So you should not take. So when once it attains the first year, you should not try to cut off the mulberry leaves. So you should not take the early leaf harvest before the plants attain the full growth. So you should take care that the plant will attain the full growth. Then in the case of mulberry under rain fed conditions, it will take 10 to 12 months before the first pruning is disordered and systematic cultivation is taken out. So on the other hand, so in about six months time, the plants will reach the full growth under the irrigated conditions. And therefore, systematic cultivation can be taken up. So this have to be taken care of. So as soon as the first year is over, you should not be in a haste, you should not be in a hurry to cut the leaves and then uh, give as a food, supplement it as a food to the silk one. So this has to be taken care of. Now, what are the various, uh, what do you say, the systematic culti uh, the conditions that need to be taken, how to maintain them, uh, we'll see now. Now coming to the rain-fed mulberry. Now rain-fed mulberry is, means the mulberry plants which grow in the rainy season. So here as mentioned, mulberry plant in June to Ju uh, July month will be ready for the first pruning in June uh, of the following year. So prior to that, what you need to do, two small harvests may be taken once in November to December and again in April to May. So the harvest should be light and it should be made by picking only, uh, picking, that is by hand picking. So only the mature leaves, leaving major part of the growing branch intact covered with leaves have to be done. Then next is pruning. Now for maintaining the mulberry in a state of vigorous growth and also for obtaining good quality, periodic pruning is necessary. The periodic pruning also should take into consideration the growth attained by the plant. Normally, the growth should be more in height and stem. Pruning means nothing but cutting. Okay. The next is, uh, so this rain-fed mulberry should receive or one annual bottom pruning in June coinciding with the receipt. Okay. So this system uh, of pruning, you call it as gudali. Gudali pruning currently practice is too drastic and it cuts into root zone, which leads to reduced branching and gradually to even mortality of the plant. So therefore, such a practice should be given up and pruning should be carried out at, as indicated above. That is, hand uh, made uh, should be done. So hand picking and uh, handmade should be done. So this is, you yeah, see, the correct way of pruning. So this is how you have to go for the pruning. So next is, again, weeding and intercultivation. So nowadays, within a week of pruning, weeding and intercultivation. So this is how, this is the correct way of the pruning uh, method. Now next is what you have to do is the weeding and intercultivation. So already we have seen weeding is nothing but the growth of the unwanted uh, plants or the unwanted roots. So this also has to be taken care of. So within a week of pruning, weeding and intercultivation should be carried out uh, by plowing or using a harrow. So the weeds around the plants, which are not generally removed by plowing or harrowing, should be removed manually. And this operation will stimulate the growth of the plants and also it will help uh, in the uh, penetration of the rainwater into the soil, resulting in better conservation of the soil moisture. And uh, up to uh, four uh, weeding and intercultivation operations should be carried out. The next is manuring. After that, again, you have to go for the manuring, that is, the present low yields of leaf under rain fed is due to the poor rainfall and lack of inadequate application of menus or fertilizers. So therefore, you need to actually um, uh, spray the manure. Optimum manuring has to be done in the fields. Therefore, manure should be applied in the form of both bulk organic manure, like compost or cattle manure, and also chemical fertilizers. Like you have uh, um, uh, compost or cattle manure, you can go and also chemical fertilizers. Organic manure should be applied at the rate of 10 tons per hectare immediately after pruning and intercultivation. And it should be thoroughly incorporated into the soil. And it should be done once in a year so that the organic content is improved. And as a result, the fertilizer application is utilized. Alternately, suppose if the organic manure is not available, then you can go for a green manure crop like sun hemp, which can also be raised annually during the rainy season along with the mulberry and it should be incorporated into the soil for the purpose of manuring.
So then in addition to bulk organic manure, you can also uh, spray the chemical fertilizers, uh, chemical fertilizers uh, in the form of about 100 kg, uh, 100 kg nitrogen, 50 kg phosphorus and 50 kg potassium per hectare per annum, which can also can be applied in two equal spread doses. So in first dose in the month of August and the second dose uh, also can be uh, applied. So in the form of two doses, the second dose uh, may be uh, given. So these menus, apart from this, you can also uh, give them the ammonium as well as the urea. So while applying the fertilizers, it should be spread close to the plant on either sides along the row as shown in figure. So this is here given. So after application, the fertilizer should be incorporated well into the soil by digging with the help of a spade or by forking it with a digging fork for good results. This is how you have to do. See here, fertilizer application on either side of the row. And in this case, you are seeing the incorporation of the fertilizer into the soil uh, and working with the spade. So this is how we have to do. The next is harvesting of the leaves. So how to harv harvest the leaves? Harvesting of the leaves is nothing but we have to cut down the leaves. So when once uh, they have attained a full growth or when once the mulberry plantation has attained a full length, then you can go for the harvesting of the leaves. So leaf harvest usually commences about 10 weeks from the time of pruning in June and up to six harvest can be taken during the year at an interval of seven to eight weeks in between the harvest. So the again, the quantum of harvest, that is a quantity of harvest, it will depend upon the precipitation released in different seasons. They say that uh, it will be more during the rainy season uh, from August to December uh, during the first three harvest and comparatively it will be poorer during the drought months that is from January to May, except Munuguru, Munagaru season where when the pre-monsoon showers are received, then there it will be uh, the harvest will be a little bit improved. Then the picking of leaves, just I have told you, harvesting is nothing but the picking of leaves. So this picking of leaves should be carried out in time uh, that is when the leaves are at the correct stage of maturity for harvesting. Otherwise, what happens is the part of the leaves will become over mature or it will become coarse and they will suffer in quality from the point of view. Then also the part of the leaves may turn yellow, they may shed and it will be lost. Therefore, timely harvest is very, very essential as these har uh, leaves reach the required stage or maturity, uh, maturity. Mm, uh, then only you have to take it. Suppose if they overgo this, then they will become yellowish and they will, they will be shed off. So we have to see that the leaves, mulberry leaves should not go waste. So without any wastage and without uh, any realization of the maximum yield, you have to take care and you have to pick the leaves. So next, so it is also uh, important to see that, uh, uh, important to stress here that while harvesting, the terminal buds of the branches should not be picked up. The terminal buds will be there, no, it should not be picked. It should not be actually uh, picked, with, uh, picked, but it should be allowed to grow till the plant reaches its full frame of growth up to six feet or so. So therefore the tips of the branches may be picked so as to encourage the formation of secondary branches. Uh, branches. Unfortunately, the current practice, what do they do is they try to strip the entire branch from top to bottom every harvest, which will result in serious setback of the growing plant. So therefore this also has to be taken care of. Then next is the leaf yield. How much of leaf yield we will get it? So by adopting the package of practices for the rain-fed mulberry, it should be possible to harvest about 7,000 to 8,000 kgs of leaf per year, per hectare. So in one year per hectare, you can get about 7,000 to 8,000 kgs. So which means that you are 100%, uh, what do you say, success. So 100% improvement in the yield over the present level of harvest. So here the above schedule may be mentioned. See summary of schedule of operations for rain-fed mulberry they have given. So annual bottom pruning. Okay, timings. Then first reading when you have to do application of bulk organic manure. So they have given the, uh, what do you say, the summary of the schedule of operations for the rain-fed uh, crop or the rain-fed mulberry. This is all about the operations. The next is irrigated mulberry. So just not till now, we have talked about the rain-fed mulberry, now about the irrigated mulberry. The same way you have to talk about, same again, under irrigated mulberry means the rain-fed mulberries it receives the rainfall that is the rain directly from the uh, during the monsoon period. But irrigated mulberries, you are not actually doing the plantation under the, I mean, during the rainy season, but under different season when they are doing, then you have to actually 
provide them the irrigated water or are under irrigated conditions. So that is what is called as irrigated mulberry. So here under irrigated mulberry, that means you have to provide the water and all those things when there are no rains. So irrigated mulberry, so under irrigated conditions, the mulberry will register faster growth than under rain fed conditions. And therefore, the plant will attain sufficient growth in about five to six months time and it will become due for the first pruning or the harvest. Therefore, systematic cultivation can be commenced and the leaf harvest can be taken at roughly about 10 weeks interval. Uh, interval. So they say that actually rain-fed mulberry, when compared to rain-fed mulberry, irrigated mulberry actually will give the more yield. So again, same way as you have done for the rain-fed uh, mulberry, the same procedure you need to follow. That is, you have to go for pruning. Okay, again, it depends. Slight variation will be there, but the stages almost will be the same. That is, you have to follow, go for the pruning. The next is again weeding and intercultivation, as you have done for the rain fed crop. Then manuring, same way you have to go for the manure once in a year. Bulk organic manure has to be given either in the form of cattle manure or compost. Apart from that, chemical fertilizers also has to be uh, uh, sprayed. So here, fertilizer schedule for irrigated mulberry. So this is how, see here. This is how they have given. That is the fertilizer schedule for the irrigated. So first application, row system and pit system. So actually, in the irrigated uh, uh, mulberry only, two types of pit system, uh, two types of systems uh, of cultivation I have already told you. That is one is the pit system and the other one is the row system. Now in the rows means you have to directly in rows, in lines you have to do it. Pit system means where you have to dig the pits and then you have to go for it. So for, this is the schedule for the irrigated mulberry how and when to apply the fertilizer. So first application, second application and third application. Okay, then fifth up, fourth application, fifth application as well as the sixth application. Overall, they have given how much for row system and how much for the pit system. So after application of the fertilizers and all those things, then you have to go for irrigation. So among various agronomic inputs in, to which mulberry plant responds very well, irrigation ranks high as it enables full utilization of the heavy rain applications of the fertilizer for crop production. Since then, uh, this item of input is fairly expensive. So this is all about the irrigation. See here. So that's when irrigation is regulated as indicated above, best growth of mulberry is obtained from water is also effectively utilized without any wastage. So this is how you have to do the mulberry cultivation. Here, this is shallow channel and superficial irrigation, and this is the proper size channel with deep irrigation. Then leaf harvest, when you have to do, in case of row system, leaf harvest are taken by the shoot method, wherein the twigs along with the leaves, as in the pruning. Next is harvesting in case of the Harvesting in case of the pit system is carried out by picking leaves individually. So the first harvest after pruning will become due. Then yield, average yield of about 25,000, 30,000 of leaves can be harvested per annum per hectare under the row system. In case of pit system, since only two prunings are made during the year, the plant is unable to develop a higher frame. So here, the yield is very, very less when compared to that of the uh, row system. So this is the proper irrigation and manuring poor yield. The next is the summary of schedule of operations for irrigated mulberry. Just now we have seen for the, see here, row system. The next you have it for pit system. Then you have the quality of the leaf harvest. So finally, now when you are going for cultivation, what is the quality? Not only the quantity, but quality also matters a lot. So what is our aim of mulberry cultivation? Nothing but to cultivate the plants so that we can give it as a supplement, as a food. Because silkworms rarely feed on the mulberry plants. So that is why not only the quantity is essential, but also the quality of the leaf is also very, very essential. So the aim of this mulberry cultivation for silkworm rearing should be not only increased leaf yields, but also the quality leaves. So therefore, the leaves in the field at the time of harvest should be fully grown. They should be lush looking and dark green in color. Such quality harvests are readily achieved by following the package of recommendations made in this paper. So therefore, 
uh, uh, paling off or a laying off leaves are the symptoms or deficiencies in the plant nutrients for moisture. So if they become yellowish, then it is of no use. So it should be promptly corrected. So this is how you have to take care. So this, the leaf. Okay. This is the leaf. So another important point to be noted is in case of irrigated garden is uh, that uh, when the worms under rearing pass through the fourth and fifth instar so that the sufficient leaves are available for the last instar worms. So that is how you have to take care. So this is all about the different, we have seen the taxonomy of uh, mulberry plant, where it stands and what are the different varieties of the mulberries. Uh, uh, that is the different stains that have been actually produced by different research centers. And what is a good variety that is the best variety we have seen is the canva and how to go about with the mulberry cultivation, irrigated mulberry, rain fed mulberry, as well as uh, by the pit system, as well as by the uh, row system. So these are the things that you need to take care of for the cultivation of the mulberry. So unless and until uh, you follow a, uh, a proper uh, uh, procedure and take care properly and go about with the proper management, the cultivation of the mulberry will not be good. So you should produce not only the quantity wise, the mulberry leaves, but at the same time, the quality wise also should be uh, good. So this is all about the uh, mulberry cultivation. So with this today, we will close the class.